where are all the sellers? Are we just not going to see a spring inventory bump? Because at this point, when will our inventory levels actually dip below the record low inventory levels that we saw back in 2021 and 2022? Let's dive into all of this as we go over the single family and condo markets in the state of Massachusetts. We're also going to take a look at interest rates and also talk about a social media meme that says to actually tank your credit score in order to get a better rate. Don't go tanking that score quite yet. And for the luxury home of the week, we're headed to the most expensive house in the South Shore in Cohasset. It's not small as it spans over 20,000 square feet. Hi, I'm Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent. I've sold more than a thousand houses and I'm one of the state's top agents. If you have any questions about real estate, then no, I'm here to help. Now, another day and another real estate is going to crash video popped up in my YouTube feed. It's like the real estate mindset, reventure consulting, and that grand whatever guy are just trying to make fetch happen. Hey guys, it's not gonna happen. Meanwhile, here in the real world, new construction sales actually surged in March. We're only 3.4% behind March of last year's numbers. Not to mention, on here on Main Street, where the actual sales data that they try to manipulate actually happens, inventory continues to be restrained. Actually, restrained a lot more than I would have thought, and it's multiple offer situation after multiple offer situation. Just today, I wrote two offers, one of which was for $105,000 over asking price, and the other was a mere $90,000 over asking price. And I'll say it again, because at this point, if you had a dollar for every time I said it, then you'd probably be buying that luxury home of the week. But you can have a price correction without a surge of inventory. If sales go down, but inventory also goes down with sales by the same percentage, then the market dynamics have not changed. It's just less sales. And that's exactly what we're experiencing today. But now let's jump into the single family sales market. We currently have 3,137 houses on the market in the state of Massachusetts. Now, what the heck? Inventory actually went down this week. Here is a fun fact. We have less than 5% more inventory on the market today than we did 28 days ago. And the gap between the amount of inventory on the market today versus today last year is way down to 233 units. We're flirting with the historical low numbers of 2021 and 2022. And at this point, I'm really starting to question whether we're going to dip into the inventory levels that we saw back in 2022, which just, it's just crazy to me. Now, what's hurt is the amount of new listings that came on the market this week. We had 961 homes that came on the market, and this was surprisingly low. Take out Easter and do a three-week rolling average, if you will, and we're going to get 985 units. So I guess it's relatively in line with that, but this was shocking. But to put it all in perspective, we had 1,482 homes come on the market this week last year. So we were 35% off of last year's inventory numbers. And that dip in inventory is very well tied to the strong week for under agreements. There were 1,031 single family homes that went pending. Check this out. That 1,031 units beats out the same week last year when 995 homes went under agreement. Yes. It may only be by 3.6%, but I believe that this is the first time we've actually seen this all year. Remember how I said that our percentage year-over-year year decrease in sales numbers would actually start settling out and be completely settled by August, September? Well, here is the start of it all. These houses will be the ones that are closing in June, so continue to keep your eye on that. There were 544 homes that closed last week for an average sales price of $764,000 and a median sales price of $579,000. And then that months of inventory, this is how we determine what type of market we're in. Zero to five months is considered a seller's market. With the closer that you can get to zero, the stronger and more aggressive of a seller's market it is. Now, this week's months of inventory jumped to 1.74 months compared to last week's 1.76 months. This continues to indicate that it is a very strong seller's market. Oh, and for the shameless plug, I just just wanted to mention that if you're thinking about buying or selling a home, that it would be a true pleasure to help. But now onto the condo market. We have 2,182 condos on the market as of Monday. Now, inventory moved up by 32 units. Yay! The inventory gap between this year and last year shrunk to 248 units. These inventory levels are just crazy to me. If you'd asked me back in August of last year what I thought inventory was going to be this year in the spring, there is no way I would have told you that it would be pretty much equivalent to what we're seeing now and well this same time last year. There were 539 condos that came on the market this week. Now slightly below last week's 551 units, but right in line with the four week rolling average minus Easter week of 521 units. But all that being said, we were still 24% off of last year's numbers when 710 condos came on the market. 
We had 508 counters go under agreement this week, which is not bad considering the four-week rolling average is 413 units. But how about this as a first? It is tied with the same week last year when 508 condos went under agreement. Are you noticing a trend here? Both in the single family and condo markets. And before you know it, the headlines of real estate sales fell by a crazy percent or are going to be gone. Because we're no longer comparing our Chevy of a year to a Ferrari of a year. This is when last year it just started to slow down because of those increasing interest rates. And I wonder what all those two McLubers are going to do. Because, well, that's pretty much all they can do at this point, right? There were 257 condos that sold this week for an average sales price of $703,000 and a median sales price of $527,000. And then that month's of inventory, it was unchanged from last week as it sits at 2.45 months. Do you like hearing about what's going on in the Massachusetts real estate market? Then I appreciate you hitting that like button as it makes a huge difference to those YouTube gods. And subscribing, well, that one doesn't hurt either. So feel free to subscribe. Now rates, they're flat. We really didn't see any substantial movement over the last week. It seems that social media is awash with a new premium being charged for borrowers with high credit. I even had a friend reach out asking if it would actually affect his current mortgage. And then my accountant, out of all people, today he asked if it's going to affect home sales. Let's unpack this one a little bit because there's a lot of bad information out there. So before you stop paying your bills, let's separate fact from fiction. First, and most importantly, you will absolutely not get a better deal on a mortgage rate if your credit score is lower. Yes, I know what all the texts and news headlines are saying. 620 FICO score gets a 1.75% fee discount and 740 FICO pays 1% fee. Higher, right? Yeah. Okay, so what is all of this? It has to do with the loan level price adjustments that are imposed by Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae. Now, loan level price adjustments are based on loan features such as your credit score and the loan to value ratio, among other things. Now, this is not the first time they've changed, but this fairly substantial change was actually announced back in January. And I'm going to get back to that in a second, because January, really? We're just now finding out about it? Now, the low-level price adjustment change is indeed changing in a way that, well, it improves costs for those with lower credit scores and increases costs for those with higher credit scores. But what is happening is that people are confusing the change for that actual cost. What has happened is the gap between what a low-credit borrower and a high-credit borrower is now smaller. Now, the change amounts to a tweak of an existing fee structure in favor of those with lower credit scores and at the expense with those with the higher credit scores. But there is no scenario where someone with a lower credit score will have a lower fee than someone with a higher credit score. Okay, let's put all of this together. Take a look at this pricing chart. As you can see, if you have a score of 640, you'll be paying significantly more than if you had a 740 credit score. Using an 80% loan-to-value ratio as an example, and it's a difference of about 1.375%. So the 640 credit score is going to be paying a 2.25% premium versus the 740 credit score at a 0.875% premium. So please do not stop paying your bills. Please stay focused on having exceptional credit. You'll get more favorable rates. Yes, not as favorable as before, but still more favorable. And back to that January part that I mentioned earlier. Like I said, this was actually enacted in January, and it has to do with delivery dates of the loan when this actual loan will be delivered to Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. This is why it's just now affecting us as the delivery date starts the change as of May 1st, 2043. And now under that luxury home of the week, which is located at 49 Margin Street in Cohasset. Fun fact, did you see the movie Confess Fletch? If so, then some of those scenes might look familiar as they were actually filmed here. Now, this home is essentially the centerpiece of the Cohasset Harbor and is considered one of the finest estates in Massachusetts, as it has more than 1,800 feet of waterfront and sports its own 112-foot deep water dock. This home is deep in history, as it was once owned by Clarence Barron and family, who were the former owners of the Wall Street Journal. Now, this Georgia-style brick home is nestled on 9.41 acres of meticulously maintained coastline. This estate sports grand reception rooms while also providing comfortable family living spaces. You don't want to miss the multiple terraces and decks with sweeping views, a swimming pool, tennis courts, carriage house, skating pond, and a private sandy beach. Now this unbelievable home is being marketed with an asking price of $18 million. Want to talk about your own personal real estate needs? I do the luxury house of the week. Well, just for fun. Because my specialty and love is actually helping the normal guy. Not the gal buying an $18 million waterfront estate. And when it comes to helping people sell, my goal is to provide the same services that that $18 million mansion folk gets, 
but for us non $165,000 per year property taxpayers, right? Every person's home, well, it's their castle, and they deserve to be treated that way. Now, all of my contact information, it's in the description below. You can also visit me at youtuberealestateagent.com. Just fill in some of your info, and then I'm going to reach out to you, whichever is best and easiest for you. I personally love to talk about real estate. So whether you're looking to buy or sell a house in the next nine or 90 days, then I would love to chat with you and just find out a little bit more about your real estate goals. Questions or comments about any of this market data, then drop me a line in the comment section below. You take the time to watch the video, so I'm always going to take the time to answer your questions. Until next time.